Now in this, we've tried to highlight as to what are the causes of falls. So if you look at this, this is like a brief overview of all the falls that are the possible causes of falls, okay? Now let's start with the least important but always neglected cause of fall and that is right here, environment and other factors. So we tend to ignore the environmental factors that happen inside our house. We tend to forget the fact that we do not have uh, an environment which is safe enough where we can walk. For example, having uneven stairs or different kinds of uneven floorings or having poor lighting which can have a, a real good impact on the possibility of a fall. And if we go to the next important cause that is weakness and frailty. So as simple as aging process that happens on a regular basis. Now for example, everybody in this uh, on this earth everybody tends to age every single day but what happens eventually is in the initial days what happens is we, we tend to lose onto our cells but it is also a possibility that we tend to regain those cells that we lose on a regular basis but as we tend to keep on aging the process at which we lose our cells is higher than the process that we regain those cells with healthy uh, development on that happens in our body so that leads to a lot of weakness in our day, in our functioning in our muscles and that has a possibility of an increase in falls then if we look at the next important factor that is musculoskeletal now how many of you say they have got pain in your knees or pain in your back I'm very sure almost all of you have got some or the other issue in terms of your knee pain in terms of your back pain hip pain all of these are contributing factors as a result of aging. So as you age, you tend to lose on to your osteoblasts. These are the cells that are present in your bones, leading to something called as osteoporosis, where you tend to lose the density of your bones, leading to something called as osteoarthritis, which is something like a degeneration in your cartilage, leading to a higher susceptibility of falls. So that leads to giving away, that leads to deconditioning of the muscles that happens eventually. And that's why always we keep on telling people to keep on moving as much as you can. You shouldn't be stopping to move just because it hurts. It, movement is very important as much as pain relief. Okay. The next important thing is neurological conditions combined with mental health, right? So different kind of neurological conditions say stroke, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, motor neuron disease, different kinds of neurological condition is something that uh, affects your brain and your spinal cord. So obviously when these are the main structures that control your body and when these structures have an impact, then it has an impact on your posture, your balance and the way you conduct yourself as well. And mental health, you all must be aware of Alzheimer's, dementia, and because you don't know what you're doing, you have different kinds of perception disorders like hallucinations, visual hallucinations, auditory hallucinations, where you don't know what you're doing. And once, once you don't know what you're doing, obviously it, it puts you in a chain where you get confused with your day-to-day -day activities. That again leads to something like a fall. And the last thing is heart problems, which is quite minimal, rare, but it is also one of the major things that needs to be considered. So as simple as a syncope or a drop attack, what that means is whenever you're not aware of having a healthy blood pressure, if you tend to, ch tend to change your positions at times, which is all of a sudden, you tend to drop on your blood pressure, that again leads to a fall. So it's always better to be aware of all these factors that can eventually lead to a fall. So it's more about creating awareness and having that awareness about different things and acting upon it accordingly. Okay. Now, what are the effects once you have a fall? What is it that it can lead to? So number one and most important effect is say, first we'll start with the physical effects. Sometimes you might be just lucky. Everything would be all right. You might just end up having a bruise and it should get better with six to eight weeks time but it's not going to be the same thing every single time so once you tend to age after a particular time as i told you that the osteoblast activity reduces that happens and then it leads to something like a fracture okay and once you have a fracture obviously that makes things more difficult to cope up with because you already have a low density in your muscles in your bones and obviously to recover from that it takes even longer than that yeah and then all of that again if you happen to damage your head if you happen to hit your head that again can lead to an increase in something called as the intracranial pressure 
leading to something like a brain hemorrhage but all of these are something that i'm talking about extreme ends but you should always be aware of what is it that it can lead to so that you are in a position to act for yourself as well as for someone like a close family member right now all of this also has obviously an eff effect on your mobility status so once you have a fracture once you are in pain obviously you're going to stop moving that is going to have effect on your muscle fibers so they are going to shrink they are going to become thin and obviously to recover from that you're going to take again a little bit longer than that right this can all lead to something like a mental depression because you're not able to do what you can do you can't go and do your gardening for two hours that you were able to do for say the last one month and all of a sudden that's putting you off and you have to sit back home doing nothing possibly watching netflix which you don't even enjoy so that's horrible isn't it to be in that state of mind so that leads and again that leads to something called as very important fear so you fear to do anything you fear to stand up you fear to go out to garden you fear to do drive you fear to do everything for that matter because you are not confident enough and to build that confidence it's again a matter of time right and restricts you restricts your day to day activities and your lifestyle now all of this again has a social impact that's what i was talking about so it has uh, an impact on an inability to leave home then you get dependent on your relatives your carers and you need to take support for every small bits that you do in your day to day activities and that is something that puts you off again so this is all interlinked to each other right